Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to add some enhancements to the author's form that we designed in the last lesson. The first thing I did was to split the author's name into first and last names in the table because, of course, when you're running a library, you're probably going to want to search on authors by their last name. And as you can see here, now the the names are split that allows us to sort by last name you can select it in the table and sort A to Z or in reverse so that's a much better design and as I said before if you don't get everything right immediately you can always go back in and change it and again this is another example of having the author information in its own table I was able to change the representation of the author's name once for each author and it's done. Now that can be referenced wherever we need it throughout the database. So let's go back to the author's form and take a look at the form as it stands now. Now the book author field is gone. That was the full author's name. So it's showing a little bit of an error here. And if we actually go into form view, you'll see this little error message here. When you see this, which you probably will at some point if you work with Access for any length of time, it means that Access is not finding the field that is referenced by the control. And if we go back into Design View and we look at the field's properties, we can click on the Data tab and again notice that it's actually focused on the book author control and it's looking for the book author field which of course no longer exists so we're just going to get rid of this field and instead we're going to go to add existing fields and now we have the last name and first name field so I'm going to go ahead and drag those over and we can place them on the form anywhere really and then first name and now if I go to form view it actually shows the author's name so that's an example of how you can make a change to a form when necessary. Now, let's go ahead and tidy this form up a little bit. Obviously, this is not how we want it to look in day-to-day -day use. So let's go to Design View, and I'm right-clicking and selecting Design View there. And let's expand this view a little bit. Coming up here to the top, we have the Form Header and that's the header section that's going to show every time we see the form. Forms can also be divided into pages so if we right click and select page header footer we could actually show a page header but most of the forms that I've created have only been one page. They've been designed to take up one screen of information and if I need to do more than that I'm going to create another form that can be opened as needed. So let's get rid of that. But we still have the form header. And that can be hidden too if you want. But for now we'll leave it in place. I'm going to right click on this label control. And I'm going to select size to fit. And that shrunk the label control down so that I can now shrink the header and I'm going to do something about the arrangement of these controls. I'm going to arrange them a little bit better. You can actually select them and move them around as you need. Labels tend to be attached to the controls that they're assigned to when they're first created. They can be detached so that they can move independently. So let's move these around a little bit and this is something that you can learn as you go you know you can play around with the design features and if your first few forms look a little bit rough that's okay you can always take the time to refine them as you go and I'm going to do the same thing here size to fit shrink those down now the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of the author ID field it's not needed on the actual form. The form will still have access to it if needed, but whenever you enter a new record, as you saw in the table, it's going to create that ID value within the table. That value, since it's an auto number, doesn't really have any meaning to the 
to the user and we don't want it being edited by mistake so let's get rid of that and then let's take these two and move them up here I'm going to edit this label that won't affect the field at all it's just a label again with these first and last name fields each one has a limit of 35 characters I think I'm going to put these two fields under the name field this is not going to be the prettiest for them and sometimes you'll probably want to move things around until you get them looking exactly the way you want Okay, so now I have it tidied up a little bit. I have it in some kind of order. Let's go ahead and look at the form view. So that looks a little bit better. Now I'm going to go back to the design tab and I'm going to click on tab order. Tab order is the order in which the fields are going to be accessed by the tab key. And so if I click on that, it brings up the tab order and as you can see it's going to the biography field first then the year born then the year died and if I go into the form view you can see how this works it actually goes to them out of order which is not really what you want you want your users to be able to tab through the fields in order so I'm going to open up the tab order screen and I'm going to click on auto order so now that's in the order in which the fields are being displayed and you can actually change these, these manually if you like you can move them around and decide on the flow of the form but for this purpose auto order works pretty well so let's click OK and if we go back to view you can see now that control is being moved in the order that makes sense now when you're working with your data let's say that you want to change a specific author's information you probably don't want to have to page through all the records so one thing that you can do is click on any of these fields and use the find function or you can use control F which is the same thing and let's type in Vonnegut so that goes right to the record and you can also filter on records you can sort either way so there are some very handy search functions and sorting functions within the access forms another thing that you could do is to actually add a search control to the form let's go into design view and let's come up here to the controls that are available in design view and I'm going to select the combo box control and that's a drop down box that provides a list of values it's going to select that and click anywhere in the header and that's going to bring up the combo box wizard I'm going to select the third option find a record of my form click next and I'm going to use the last name click next and it shows all the last names in the table go ahead and click next and finish and I'll expand that a little bit now we can see that when I click the down arrow it actually shows the list of names and if I select one of them it goes right to that record now these are not in alphabetical order so let me go ahead and go back into design view and let's take a look at the properties for that field right click and properties and here we can see that it's using the row source property to select that list of values from the table let's go ahead and click the build button on that and we can see that it's accessing TBL authors through a query and it's showing the author ID and the last name so it's pulling that list of last names I'm just going to go ahead and double click here 
so that it's sorting in ascending order and go ahead and close that and if we look back at the properties we can take a look at how it's formatted you see here the column count property actually mentions how many columns were in that query we saw that it, that it had the author ID and the author last names and the column widths is a very important property there because you had two columns and it's specifying the display width of each of those columns in this control. In this case the first column is zero inches so we're not seeing it at all. It's effectively hidden and the second column, the author's last name, is one inch in width and it's not showing any column headers. We could change that just to show you what it will do and if we click on view and use the drop down now it's showing that column header and it's showing the names in alphabetical order now that I've told it to sort ascending so that's a very handy feature of course with this type of control if you start typing a name within the control it's going to automatically complete it for you and as soon as I tabbed out of that it went straight to the record so that's a very handy little control that you can use to search through the records on a forum, chances are in any database that you're building you're probably going to end up with hundreds or even thousands of records that you want to work with. So it's a good idea to make your forms as user friendly and easy to use as possible and this is one way in which you can do it. So now we have a very basic authors form. You can move between records, you can move between the fields, update them as needed that's pretty much ready to put into use. Again, you can always go back and change the design later if you identify more features that you want, but for right now, that's actually a decent little form that will do what you need it to do. Actually, I would change one detail here. I'll come up here and say author info or something like that. In upcoming lessons, we'll see more about how to use the various controls that are available through Design View. You have a lot of different controls that you can use to do a lot of really interesting things with your data and to make your forms as user-friendly as possible and we'll be looking at some more of those and how to best use them with your forms.